Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heads Up, the official weekly podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel, migraine strategist, founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation, and chronic daily migraine survivor. I'm here every week bringing awesome information to all of you out there with Dr. Vincent Martin, MD. He is the director of the Head and Facial Pain Clinic at the University of Cincinnati, and he also happens to be the president of the National Headache Foundation. Hello, Dr. Martin. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. Oh, good. All right. We have an awesome and very relevant topic for this time of year. It is spring, and yes, happy spring. We all love spring, but some of us feel awful. Some of us people with chronic headaches and chronic migraines just feel awful this time of year, and I'll be honest, I'm one of them. It never seems to fail that during the spring, I am not feeling well. So today we're going to talk about one of the things that can cause that. There may be more than one thing, but we're going to start by talking about allergies and how they can kick up these problems. So let's start with the question of, let's just explain what causes allergies. What are allergens? Well, allergies are caused by different substances in the environment that that cause a, a, a specific type of immune response in your body. So a response of your, your inflammatory cells. Mm -hmm. And examples of allergies include things like cat dander or dog dander, which are just cat hair or dog hair. Mm -hmm. Could include uh, tree pollen, could include grass pollen, could also include things like uh, ragweed, which you often see in the fall. Mm -hmm. And certain allergens are more common in certain seasons. Like right now, at least in Cincinnati, there's real high tree pollen uh, levels. Mm -hmm. And during the fall, is very, it's very common for mold and ragweed to go up. So there are different allergens that, are, that occur in different, different seasons as well. Okay. So let's discuss what is hay fever and what are the symptoms of it? Well, hay fever is uh, a disorder of the nose, and you basically get um, nasal congestion, you can get a runny nose, you can get post-nasal drip where that drainage goes down the back of your throat. Sometimes you can get some itchy eyes and, and red eyes uh, from the allergens as well. And then many patients along with the hay fever will get a lot of sinus pressure. So they'll get pressure over the cheekbones or, or between the eyes or in the forehead that accompanies uh, hay fever as well. Okay, so how are allergies diagnosed? How do we officially know if we are suffer from allergies? Well, in some cases, you just get a suspicion by your own exposure. Like if, if you don't normally have a runny nose or nasal congestion, you go over to somebody's house mm -hmm. and they've got a cat and you happen to be allergic to that cat and all of a sudden your nose runs and it gets congested and you start itching your eyes and so forth, right. you probably have an allergy. But to be formally diagnosed, you have to have um, symptoms upon exposure to that allergen, and then you have to have some allergy test, which is positive. And the most common ones are these things called skin prick tests, mm -hmm. where they take little bits of the allergen and put it on the tip of a needle and kind of prick your skin. And then if you have like a real red, you know, red wheel kind of around the where the prick mark is, then that's positive for that particular allergen. There's also some blood work that can be done to, um, to identify allergens as well, but you have to go see usually an allergist to make that diagnosis. Okay. So um, let's say we do have allergies and we are experiencing hay, hay fever this time of year. Does hay fever cause headaches? Well, that's a, that's a great question. We, the answer is we don't know for sure. Mm. But we do, what we do know is that there seems to be a very strong relationship between hay fever and migraine. So okay. patients with migraine have, are more likely to have hay fever, and mm. people who have more frequent migraines are even more likely uh, to have hay fever symptoms as well. Okay. But what we don't know is what, whether migraine, because of all the nerves that go to the nose and, and sinuses, whether that can cause some of the these symptoms that we call hay fever, or whether or whether the, the allergens themselves, along with this hyperactive um, hyperactive nerves, produce hay fever. Okay, so that is important for us to know because I think a lot of us have been told that we're crazy, that we think that we feel worse this time of year, and it's nice to know that there might be a reason. Um, so. What are some of the treatments for allergies? What are some of the things we can do this time of year to, to help us feel a bit better? Well, there are a number of different therapies. So the most common uh, 
of therapy is antihistamines. Mm -hmm. Those can be purchased over the counter. Mm -hmm. And there's both what we call sedating, more likely to make you sleepy when you take them, and non-sedating. A lot of people will, will, will purchase the non-sedating ones. But they're pills, uh, generally, um, that basically reduce some of the um, hay fever symptoms. The second uh, therapy is, is nasal steroids. Mm -hmm. So they have a small amount of steroids in them, and they're nasal sprays that you spray up into the nose. And those probably more than anything block a lot of the chemicals that are released from the inflammatory cells as part of the allergic uh, response. So antihistamines and nasal steroids have been, have been found to, to be helpful for that. Now, what's interesting too about the nasal steroids is they found that it reduces some of the sinus pressure associated with hay fever. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, in one study where they looked at patients that had gr uh, grass pollen allergies, they had half of them, half of them receive a nasal steroid mm -hmm. and half received a placebo uh, spray up their nose. And what they found was that the nasal steroid released, relieved a lot of the sinus pressure symptoms. And many people believe the pre that sinus pressure is kind of the, an early sign of, of a migraine. Right. In fact, we've done studies in people that have what they call sinus headaches. Right. Sinus headaches are those headaches that people will have a lot of these hay fever symptoms, but have have headaches along with it. Usually, the headaches are in this location. Mm -hmm. That uh, it basically that that maybe if you can get rid of some of this sinus pressure, that maybe you can head off a, a migraine from from ever coming on. I think that's an extremely important point um, uh, because I do think people notice, you know, that they whether it's a sinus headache, whatever they want to call it, but these, these headaches that come from the allergies often either trigger a migraine or make it worse. So I think that's a really important point. Um, do some people get shots for their allergies and is that likely to help migraines at this particular time of year for those of us feeling worse? Well, we've done a lot of that research at the University of Cincinnati and we actually looked at patients that had hay fever in an allergy practice. So they, they go to see an allergist. Mm -hmm. And what we found was that some of them were receiving allergy shots and some of them were not. Mm -hmm. The group that, was, that had hay fever and re was receiving allergy shots were about 45% less likely to have migraines, okay. migraine attacks. So there may be something about allergy shots that may decrease the frequency of migraines. Um, so I, I think the reason why that might be important is because the allergy shots kind of dampen down the allergy, the response to allergies. Mm -hmm. So dampening that down may actually help uh, migraines in some people or so we, or so we theorize. Okay. Have you ever found, do you think people feel better from their migraines if they use some of these over-the-counter treatments you were discussing for their allergies at this time of year? Well, I can tell you, even myself, I had really bad um, allergies and I had migraine and every springtime, my headaches would get worse. Mm -hmm. And that I was able to, uh, to treat that with particularly nasal steroids and antihistamines. Mm -hmm. And that helped both the sinus pressure as well as the migraines together. Okay. And there could be a lot of different ways that allergies could trigger migraines. Mm -hmm. One could be that the nerves that, that are involved in migraine also goes go to the nose and sinuses. So if you create this inflammatory response in that right. area, it could irritate those nerves and make it more likely to have a migraine. Okay. The other thing that can happen in migraine patients is that if you get all congested, then you're more likely to snore at night. Mm -hmm. And if you're more likely to snore, you might have time periods where you stop breathing, and that's called sleep apnea. And that can trigger morning headaches which can, could, could then also potentially trigger migraine as well. So there are probably a number of different ways that allergies and or hay fever could trigger migraine. We've also conducted other studies that have shown that people that have more frequent headaches are more likely to have hay fever than those that have infrequent headaches or p patients that have no headaches uh, whatsoever. So there's something about hay fever, it kind of runs along with more frequent headaches. And we don't know for sure whether the, the fact that you have more frequent headaches might cause some of the hay fever symptoms or whether it's all from these allergens causing more frequent headaches. We don't really know what's the horse or what's the, what's the chicken and what's the egg. Okay. All right. I think these are all very important points and possibly some things that people with uh, a lot of migraines this time of year have not heard or tried. So uh, in summary, you may be able to decrease 
your migraine flare or your headache flare this time of year by treating your allergies or your allergy symptoms. Is there anything else you'd like to add to this topic? I would just say this is that, is that you're going to probably treat your allergy symptoms anyway. Mm -hmm. We don't know 100% whether that's going to help your migraines or not, mm -hmm. but if it does, that's great. Awesome. <laughs> I think that there are some people in whom that is the case and other people they may try these therapies that may not work, but there's so there are few, very few symptoms or side effects that you get. It's probably worth, worth a try to help relieve those symptoms and maybe help your headaches. Very true. All right. Awesome. So this is Dr. Martin and Dr. Weitzel signing out of this episode of Heads Up, and we can't wait to see you next week. Everybody